Extended reality glasses. Extended reality. What is it? Virtual reality, mixed reality, and augmented reality are all part of the extended reality XR, ecosystem. The practice dates back to the 1800s, when stereoscopes, which resembled binoculars, deceived viewers into believing that objects were in three dimensions. The same XR technology would subsequently inspire an even more immersive experience, the aptly called sensorama, which gave viewers an oral, visual. This occurred more than a century later and was the first VR machine created by cinematographer Morton Heilig in 1956. Where do these XR technologies differ? Virtual reality, or VR, is an entirely immersive simulation that makes use of equipment like a headset. Users can experience both the physical and virtual world simultaneously thanks to mixed reality, MR, which combines augmented reality, AR, and virtual reality, VR. With the use of glasses, smartphones, and other devices, augmented reality, or AR, overlays digital features and aspects onto the actual, physical world. However, for many more years, XR would mostly be the domain of science fiction authors, computer scientists, and lone visionaries. It wasn't until the 1990s, when virtual reality arcade games that XR finally found its fledgling deer-like footing. A new generation of gamers were introduced to a new, expanded reality through VR games with names like Dactyl Nightmare, Battlesphere, and Total Destruction. These games also laid the foundation for what is likely to develop into a new way to live, work, and play in the metaverse. Adding the metaverse to reality. The term, metaverse, first used by Neil Stevenson in his 1992 novel Snow Crash, denoted a virtual haven to which people went in order to flee their actual bleak reality. According to Wired writer Eric Ravenscraft, the metaverse is still ill-defined and inherently vague and complex, 30 years later. The metaverse can be thought of as a collection of virtual worlds with actual people living in them that you are free to explore and engage with other users in. The CEO of venture capital firm Epillion and former global head of strategy for Amazon Studios Matthew Ball explains the metaverse in the following way in his book, The Metaverse and How It Will Revolutionize Everything. A highly scaled and interoperable network of real-time rendered 3D virtual worlds that can be experienced synchronously and persistently by a virtually limitless number of users with a continuity of identity, history, entitlements, objects, conversations, and payments. The simplest way to conceive of the metaverse, though, is as a collection of virtual worlds populated by actual people that you are free to explore and engage in social interaction in, according to Jeremy Dalton. Dalton is the head of Metaverse Technologies at PwC. Whatever terminology you use, it's obvious that the connection between the Metaverse and extended reality will keep changing. VR headsets will certainly be the preferred method for many people to enter the Metaverse, but they won't be the only option. What about wearing contact lenses or other wearables? How much of this hypothetical Metaverse we allow to permeate our physical world will likely determine the direction of XR in the future. Extended reality across industries moving beyond gaming. XR would remain grounded in gaming and entertainment for years, only gradually encroaching into broadcast sports and half-time spectacles as well as the lived literary zeitgeist. But with Facebook's $2 billion acquisition of VR technology company Oculus VR in 2014, the social media giant's subsequent corporate transformation into meta, and the ensuing bet on a speculative metaverse seven years later. The XR world has finally stabilized itself within the public consciousness, not only in gaming but also in the larger corporate world where it's assisting workplaces in becoming more efficient and collaborative. It's not a forward-looking concept, according to Dalton. This value is currently being derived. Ford, DHL, and Boeing are just a few businesses that have seen how useful XR technology can be. Utilizing virtual reality and virtual production lines to test potential modifications and their effects on workers, Dalton claims that Ford has been using this technology since the early to mid-2000s to optimize manufacturing lines for safety, comfort, and efficiency. As their so-called industrial athletes hoist a transmission over a gate, they'll analyze the stresses on the human body, Dalton added. They'll test it once more in virtual reality after iterating and making improvements. Once it has been optimized, they may then take the future production line that is ready to go and deploy it in the real world without having to interfere with the current production line's original activities. The outcome? According to Dalton, the injury rate among Ford's more than 50,000 industrial athletes dropped by 70%. It's not an idea that looks to the future. This value is currently being derived. According to Dalton, 
shipping company DHL also employed augmented reality to boost order picking productivity by 15%, while Boeing used it to streamline the manufacture of aeroplanes and cut down on wiring time. It's quite complicated, Dalton remarked, if you think about the wiring that has to go on to aeroplanes, and the many, many kilometers of wiring that needs to be placed. However, using augmented reality glasses to help you will speed up the process of correctly implementing that wiring. Business leaders may not find it difficult to see the benefits in XR, but understanding and accessing the vast selection of relevant software, gear, and content that is accessible can be intimidating. Because of this, Dynepic, a Reno, Nevada-based provider of XR training, offers businesses and clients access to immersive technology through their DX platform, which serves as a single, centralized, XR-optimized, hub. According to Dynepic CEO Chris Awatri, the government can put together a course that has an augmented reality lesson from one vendor. A VR lesson from another vendor, they can have AI operate on top of it, and then bring that together with their own content and quizzes. And all of the data is returned in one location. The military and healthcare industries, at least monetarily, are pushing XR forward, according to Watry, a former member of the US Air Force. She also believes corporate training and education will further expand the market. Watry predicted that training will be a major motivator. I think we've seen that in the military. You name it. Training for air traffic control, maintenance, or pilots. They are all unique as well. In some ways, they resemble a tiny microcosm of society. Additionally, they are putting it to the test and reporting some excellent statistics on XR's efficiency. Is XR going to your local office? The office is also ready to change as a result of extended reality. In the future, according to Dalton, every team member will be given an XR headset coupled with a laptop and smartphone when they join a company, regardless of its size. Dalton imagines a work environment in which we use laptops at our workstations and smartphones while on the go, just how it is today. What will change is when, for example, Zoom and Google Meet are insufficient for connecting and collaborating with our far-flung co-workers in a workshop or training. We'll put on our VR headsets at that point and fully devote ourselves to our task. Global organizations intend to develop XR capabilities, which analysts say would enhance working experiences through more collaboration and more inclusive decision-making processes. One anticipated use case is prototype creation and training, together with virtual field trips towards an extended reality future. The MIT Nano Immersion Lab, a multidisciplinary XR service center and workshop for data visualization, VR and AR prototyping, and software and hardware development, is fully engaged in XR developments. Rex, a VR, AR gaming technologist in the lab, instructs new users on the use of advanced XR devices, such as extended reality glasses and headsets that monitor heart rate and changes in pupil size. Rex explained that while these devices go beyond the capabilities of any product currently or soon to be targeted at consumers, they are important to really push the boundaries of XR hardware. Of course, discoveries and developments in the lab may eventually be turned into an XR experience for ordinary users. Future extended reality glasses could then use a human-computer interface. The interface, that uses micro-LED screen technology, which is more energy-efficient and compatible with see-through screens. It has a gaze tracker based on pupil dilation. The interface also uses electronic, skin-based, controllerless, motion tracking, which could improve users' interaction with AR, VR. To analyze the sports training of professional fencers, another study combines XR technology with biofeedback devices, including electromyography sensors and motion tracking. Rex suggested that VR and AR could be used as tools to help these people understand what they are doing and see it for themselves. But Apple's move to XR, called a threshold moment, by experts, could greatly affect the near future of extended reality glasses and the metaverse. When Apple delivers its extended reality glasses, which could come sometime in 2023, Dalton expects increased use of XR technology. Although Apple will tout its hardware to consumers, Dalton asserts that businesses will benefit from consumer adoption. Like smartphones and laptops, XR technology will undoubtedly become more commonplace with the home use of Apple's extended reality glasses. As a business leader, this makes investing in technology easier because you can see it catching on in the market. Rex even envisions a future where computers and external displays are no longer present when employees arrive at their workplaces. That everything just sits on a headset that is highly customizable and effective. According to Dalton, 
Many of XR's immediate, practical problems have to do with price, content and hardware, particularly headsets. Dalton explained that they needed to be lighter, smaller and easier to put on and take off. Dalton said that while new versions of headsets increasingly resemble glasses, with dials to adjust vision, many headsets do not support or accommodate glasses. According to Dalton, there is an urgent need for XR technology and its potential value to organizations to be widely accepted and understood. This reluctance can be overcome by greater acceptance in the consumer market. There is really only one way to properly understand how profound XR can be, by putting extended reality glasses over your eyes and stepping into a new reality. So, guys, that was it for this video. What did you think about our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you are new to our channel, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to get notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching.